Yes, he's back there recording. Okay, we're being broadcast live and digitally recorded. Please know that. Um, and we will start with open session. Is anybody here for open session? And when I say that, it's um, something that you're, you're, you're either not or you don't know whether or not you're already on the agenda. Um, so if you have any questions on that, please ask. But otherwise, is anyone here for open session? Nope. Uh, we'll move on to announcements. Uh, Katie, what's the latest? All right, so we had a bunch of stuff, and we have a bunch more stuff. So, we had the seniors, not we, the seniors, had pie for breakfast this past, on the April 30th. Would actually, it was, it was very nice. It was, it was very full in the other room. Uh, myself and um, my co-leader for Girl Scouts, we were banished out here to get out of the way because we were in the way. And Bev kept waving her knife, yelling at me the whole time. It was lovely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is normal, but they had lots of people come through. There was lots of different pies. This whole table was filled with all kinds of pies. Um, it was a lovely event, and they, at the end, whatever pies they didn't end up cutting into, they auctioned off, and they did raise a good chunk of money, which I guess is going towards um, hopefully someday a deck. I don't know. So anyway, but the, there was lots of people for, it was from eight to noon, I believe, and the whole time there was people filtering through that room and that room was pretty much full the whole time with new faces as it's going through. So it was definitely a good day, no 911 call, so that was always a plus. And um, they had a, a very nice event. There's pictures on there and the ladies over there are always fun. So that was good. Um, coming up, I was um, asked by the Rod and Gun to make sure this gets announced and to start putting it out there that uh, the Rod and Gun, on May 14th from 8 to 11 is having a kids fishing derby. I'm assuming you call them to sign up, but I didn't really get into those details. I just know it's free. Um, and they are encouraging um, people to bring their families. They have put a lot of time and energy and efforts into this event and they wanna make sure people um, with their kids come out and sign up and well come to this event. So it's May 14th from 8 to 11 at the Rod and Gun. And again, kids fishing derby, they're gonna have prizes, hourly drawings and things like that. So it's definitely um, a fun event and go check it out. Um, and then coming up, we have the Hubbardston Memorial Day Parade on May 30th, which I've sat through a few of the meetings and the that committee is, is putting together a very nice event. It's very thought out, it's very extensive because they are in unveiling the new Vietnam Memorial Day um, uh, monument. monument. Thank you, Jesus. It's and, been a the long other, day. and the other ones. Are so yes, awesome. and the other ones they've been cleaning up and they've been adding to and they've been fixing the up the whole common. Yep. Yeah. So the parade is going to start at 11 and everyone's going to be marching down. Um, ceremony is at noon on the common. And then once the ceremony ends, everyone is invited over here, I guess, to the senior center. Um, they'll be having ice cream social and the lions will have um, I guess their food truck with hot dogs and stuff like that So and there's going to be to my knowledge some kind of Vehicles parked over here in the parking lot that you can kind of check out that were in the parade some larger Military things and Are we cars the tank and again? Such. I don't think the tanks coming, but I think it's like a bunch of what were they like deuces or something? I don't know there was something right. it was like, Yeah Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jamie drove it. Yes. So, um, but the, the, the committee is putting in a lot of effort and a lot of time in this, and I strongly suggest people come, uh, bring your camp chairs, sit along the sides, and then when the parade goes by, bring your camp chairs up to the common and join us all for the, the ceremony. It's going to be a very lovely event, um, especially with the unveiling of all the hard work that the, the Memorial uh, Vietnam uh, Committee uh, has done for to get the common all nice and pretty. So after that, we have on June 11th, the Hubberson Fair from nine to two up at the rec field. I'm still taking applications up till June 1st. So get your applications in if you haven't. Um, I have a lot of stuff going on and it's going to be a very nice um, event. We have a bunch of food trucks and kids activities, lots of vendors and activities to do. So it'll be, it'll be fun. Um, then we have the Dingy Dash on August 27th at 10 a.m. scheduled at Brigham Pond. So start thinking about your boat constructions. Um, after that, there is the 5K uh, annual Hubbardston Library Run fundraiser. It's the 25th year. It's on September 10th at 9 a.m. 
So definitely the, I was looking on the website and there's some confusion and I talked to Chris and it is the 10th because it had a different, it had the 18th, which I was confused about. So we're gonna figure that out, but it's definitely the 10th. She confirmed it, so. But if you sign up, the first 100 people that sign up get a t-shirt. Yep. Yeah, but it's the 25th year, so that's a big year. And they've been doing this for a long time and have raised lots and lots of money. So, and Dan can attest, because he runs it. Um, it's, a, it's a good run, 5K. It's nothing strenuous, but. No, I mean, no, you're right. It depends how much you put into <laughs> it, I guess. But um, no, it, they raised over $75,000 uh, for the library over the last uh, 24 and counting. And they've had, you know, when sort of 9-11 happened, uh, Chief was there. Um, it was a nice speech. It's just each year that feels like there's some sort of um, extra level of importance here. And this, this 25th year is is, uh, is signifying a long time that the that, uh, the library trustees as well as Mark and, and his family and, and others have put into it. So, um, you know, it's a big deal. I hope people come out and support it. Yeah, so sign up. First hundred people get a t-shirt, so. Or a shirt, long sleeve, right? Long sleeve long shirt, sleeve yep. shirt. I have so many. So, <laughs> Every color. Well, sign up again. My wife hates them. So, <laughs> so, then after that is on September 17th from 9 to 3, we have Field Day, <laughs> which is um, put on by the Lions, and that will be up at the rec field. And then after that, we got Non Such Night, which is a new one, October 8th from 4 to whenever. Um, and then if you really want to start signing up for stuff, start, th- start thinking ahead, we got the Light Fight starts December 2nd. So plan out your Christmas stuff. And yeah, you know, you can really want to get festive. You can pick your guesses for frozen assets. That's all there, too. But, uh, <laughs> can we have the summer first? Yeah. No, I'm just, I'm already way ahead, okay? Yeah, got a plan. So, yep. all right. Thanks, uh, Katie. Anyone else have anything else for announcements, Jeff? Yeah. Uh, f- for those who may have missed it, and just for public notice, uh, this past Wednesday night at the library, they were celebrating their 150th year, and they had kind of a little party and cake and so forth for the trustees and past trustees. So. Uh, I stopped in and I was representing the town and the board and I thanked them, etc. It's very nice. Yep. I thanked them for all the time they put in. Excellent. Thanks, Jeff. That's that's a long time. Uh, anyone else have anything else? No? Okay, we'll move on to minutes and consent agenda. I'll, I'll read the items and what the action would be and then um, um, we'll go through them to see whether or not there will be a hold. So just let me get through them first. Uh, the first item would be minutes and, and the action would be approval of minutes, March 7th and March 21st, 2022. The second item is request for appointment to the Cultural Council for Jonathan Brinker. The action would be to appoint Jonathan Brinker to Cultural Council. And the third item is the resignation of Officer Michael Pierce and the action would be to accept the resignation. So I'll, I'll read the item first and let me know if you have a hold. Uh, minutes, request for appointment to the Cultural Council for Jonathan Brinker. Resignation of Officer Michael Pierce. Okay, seeing okay, I'll make a motion to accept the consent agenda by unanimous consent as presented. Second. Discussion? None. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Yes. yes. Okay, unanimous. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, on to new business. So the first item is the police hire, introduction of Officer uh, Bresciani. Yes. Okay, um, who couldn't be here tonight? Want to let us know? He's uh, And who so are you? Uh, Sergeant Kucher, Harborson Police. Uh, he is uh, at Defensive Tactics this week. He's in the bridge uh, training program, which is for part-time officers, so they can, can become full-time officers or keep their part-time status after July 1st. So they have three in-week uh, training classes that they have to do after they complete their online class, and he was able to get one of them done real quick, so he was got into that week and he's off and running. So he's at DT this week and uh, he'll be back next week in person to continue his online stuff. Can you just give us a quick little, so is he, was he, um, was he part-time? Uh, so he was, uh, he was not part-time, with, uh, not anywhere I don't think. He was doing armed security prior to uh, being hired. Uh, we did a full interview process and he, he blew us all away with his interview. He was the best interview we've had in a long time. Uh, he's from West Boylston. He was accepted into the State Police Academy at one time and couldn't get through it because of injury. But um, he's going to be a, a good addition to the department. I think he'll fit in well with our Hubbardston style of policing. Okay. Uh, thanks, Sergeant Kusher. No problem. All right. Anyone have any questions or anything? 
No? All right, on to the next item. Um, so this is B, uh, new business. It's the ATM warrant and fiscal year 23 budget. Um, so we're, we're going to talk about changes um, and we'll get a status report and any discussion that comes from that. <coughs> so. Hi, everyone. It's good to be back. Uh, thank you for the update. Yeah. Welcome to stay or yeah, I'll hang on. Do whatever you want. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> All right, so, for so the before you go, I guess I didn't know what, what point to do this, but we, we, we have somebody new in the room who hasn't been here in a while. Um, Ryan McLean is back with us uh, after um, about a year, year plus. 13 months. 13 months. Um, we, we couldn't be happier to have him back. And, um, you know, I've spoken to him a few times. We've met. He's met with the other boards. Um, he's brought instantly back the professionalism that he left with, like unbelievably seamless. Um, I'm, I'm sure uh, there's lots of things that he, um, you know, wants to get on immediately. Um, and he participated in in ways you can't imagine being so far away for so long to stay plugged in, well beyond anything that he was required to do on his, um, uh, you know, uh, the mission that he was, you know, uh, set with. So, we're really happy to have you back. Um, really happy you came back. Um, we missed you unbelievably. Um, David, uh, you know, we'll say goodbye to you at the end of the meeting. Um, but you've you've um, you've been able to, to, to really um, keep us afloat the entire time, um, and um, let's carry on. All right, I really appreciate the support of the town. Um, you wouldn't believe the text messages, the the emails, the even people that wanted to just complain to a different voice, uh, sending me <laughs> different messages, which was a welcome distraction. I appreciate the support of the board while I uh, fulfilled my military obligations. Uh, we're under no obligation to, to retain me, and uh, I appreciate the town. And then uh, David, it was like a, you know, having an internship while I was overseas, learning from his vast knowledge, keeping me up to date, and um, I think we worked well together. I won't speak for you, but really appreciated it. So we've come up with a plan as a uh, item for talking formally about our transition, uh, but mainly I'm focused on town meeting and budget and then what's next and, and David's cleaning up some of the the day-to-day -day stuff that that needs to happen uh, in order for the town not to feel anything with the transition so so that's the plan so to talk about the uh, budget changes and discussions a um, couple of points just wanted to bring to the board's attention uh, looking through the budget as you know this is a constantly evolving process the <coughs> revenue projections that we have for some of the specifically plumbing, wire, and gas permits will need to be lowered because, of course, we are no longer with Gardner uh, as of July 1, and we will be hiring uh, on-call inspectors who will be taking some of that permitting fee uh, in exchange for their service. So we used to have an agreement that, that covered all of those costs, and now we need to make sure that we have enough money in the revolving accounts, which will reduce the revenues the town can use. And then we're looking into one item from last year, uh, we were supposed to include some new growth from a Borrego solar pilot. That it, it could have been part of the transition or, or just lack of focus, but might add some revenue to the budget. Um, and if that's the case, then uh, there would be a couple of changes, but um, all of them are focused in the areas that are still outstanding. So one of those would be the Rutland Regional Dispatch budget, as you know, is still uh, up in the air. We have the school assessment, which is always still up in the air, and then a couple of personnel changes that uh, you should know about. So just to go through them, um, Rutland Regional has received more money from the town for their revenue, but are asking for what I believe to be significant increases or changes to their structure. So they're about an $800,000 budget. They're asking for a deputy director, uh, some pretty conservative benefit projections, which they are again, then going to give to the towns, and then uh, using that new revenue to cover some of those higher costs. So I have some questions about that. We're currently budgeted at 100,000, a little over 100,000 for them, which I think is what we should be, should be a fair assessment from them. 
They're asking for 123,000, so that would be about a $20,000 delta. Um, part of the new land, the new look of the land use and building department would in, include a need for some um, additional support for Mallory, who's going to be taking on along a lot. We are lucky to hire Tony, who has some capacity to add some hours, so those hours would likely be shifted to the executive assistant role and um, reduce some of the, the budget costs for the assistant in the building department. Uh, that would free up about 10 hours for her to work on that side, which I think would be plenty. And have then, you um, have you had any discussions with any of the other dispatch towns, or has have either of you had discussions with the dispatch towns about you know the what was presented as a budget? So per the board's direction, I was heavily invested in gathering all the towns together to have a discussion about what that looked like. I had specific concerns about the what I think is a lack of transparency in the budgeting process, or really just communication. So how do you create your budget? Can we build some consensus on what that's going to be since we're partner towns? And one of the, the impetus of this was we added Warren. This board was told that the costs would go down, and they've, they've only gone up, which is understandable. Costs go up, but that should have been a conversation that the five partner communities had, and we didn't. So we put together a group to talk about dispatch. Um, at the time, Heather was in Barry, actually, and remembers some of this. When um, Ron was hired, the town administrator from Rutland, it sort of phased out as he promised we would get some communications, quarterly communications and some budget tracking. As far as I can tell, that didn't happen. Ron's no longer in Rutland, so I'm hoping to re-engage with the, uh, the five towns in order to have these conversations. So I'm not saying that you don't need a deputy director for an $800,000 dispatch budget, but I think that should be a conversation that the towns have since we paid for it. So it's easy to defray those costs if you're sharing them amongst five towns, and it's not hard to feel, but we really could use that $10,000 that that would defray in order to help fund what's gonna be a large school assessment or any of other needs like the building department. So just wanna talk about it, and I wanna highlight it to this board as something that we should be focused on in terms of um, budget monitoring. And then our town accountant is currently budgeted for 20 hours a week. She's actually working about 12 to 15 hours a week. That's more than she needs. We are completely set up, having done the conversion from VADAR, integrated her in a remote setting. We feel very comfortable with the amount of hours that are needed to monitor. Our budget's in great shape, as you saw in the audit. And our town finances are, are, are being covered by the accountant, so we can reduce some of her hours for some of these costs. In the budget process, she's only gonna be working 12 to 15. And then, as you know, Coppin Regional School District assessment is about three times more than the town can afford. Um, so with all of these changes, sharing revenue with them at 3% of our budget would be about 151,000 or 56% of the 270,000 that we are gonna get for new revenues this year. Um, that is about $500,000 less than they're asking, as you know, so those conversations are gonna have to continue. But you're talking largest override this town has seen to cover that cost. So we're gonna have to see how that budget budget plays out. There, There is no capacity unless uh, this board and the finance committee wants to drastically lower service delivery to the town to cover that type of delta. It, it basically is two years worth of revenue for for the town for just the increase alone. Ryan, did you say it was 500,000? I thought we, uh, no, I think it was 700,000. No, I, th I think it's, it's 12%. I think Ryan was saying it's the they asked with seven hundred thousand. We oh, only okay. budgeted right. two hundred yeah. and okay. some change. <coughs> so then um, I know I sent some notes, but first time I've seen you in person, some capital changes to the budget that, that I'm recommending that the board and finance committee consider for town meeting. The fire department radios, which were approved by the ARPA committee, can come out of the capital plan. We are kind of double funding them right now. That's seventeen thousand seven hundred dollars. The mini excavator, we have a good as of July 1 quote for the mini excavator that's in there. That's 15,000 less than what was requested, which is a good price. The DBW truck, which was totaled last year, does need to be replaced. It makes sense since we don't have a solid quote for the DBW roof to switch those two projects, which would leave um, about 17,000 more in free cash usage if we were to fund the $150,000 truck and defer the $100,000 roof cost. 
So that would change the request at, at town meeting to four four hundred forty four thousand up above the four hundred twenty seven thousand for that for that small difference. Given where we are in terms of free cash uh, generation for next year, so we're spending less than we said we would, and we're taking in more than we thought we would, which is a good spot to be in. Uh, I'm comfortable not having as much of a cushion in our in our free cash. Usually, we reserve a hundred thousand to make sure we can cover those unincurred costs. This would put that cushion at ninety thousand, which would allow some flexibility for any budget changes. So those are. A quick recap of some of the, the budget discussions that David and I have been having about the constantly evolving budget situation. Could you just explain again how swapping those two? It sounds like there was a fifty thousand dollar delta in the, the two DPW items. Yes, but that doesn't re that didn't result in um, it, the, the the overall delta only went up. So if you take out the radios and if you take out the the money that's over the request for the mini excavator, you're left with about 17. Okay. All right. Okay. I got it. Thanks. Okay. <coughs> so that's the update on the budget. Yes. Okay. So we also have um, the ATM warrant to discuss now. What? Um, Jump in if you need to. Any the sort of changes. The only changes that, that I'm recommending are the changes to the capital plan as just discussed and then I think we should consider the creation of a uh, building inspector revolving fund in case we are not able to secure a full-time building inspector as a backup plan but that can be rescinded at town meeting as well and it is certainly a discussion point um, we do have a topic later tonight where we can get into some of the options there it's always a confusing item for people is the revolving fund um, so quickly put, you can enter an agreement with an inspector. So say you've taken $100 to do a service. The inspector might take 75 of it and the town retains 25 to help administer that service. If we hire a building inspector to be a permanent employee or an hourly employee, then they would do all of the duties that they do and we would take in all the permit money. Or you can have an arrangement with an inspector where they take part of the permit and we don't pay them like we would a normal employee. So you need those revolving accounts for in and out money, that exchange of money for the permitting. For non-exchange money or just regular salary, it would come out of the operating <coughs> budget. Okay. All right, so so, how much would we do a revolving account for? Just, it would be available for... Usually we put it, we bound it though, don't we? Yeah. Yes. Right. So anyway, it's just something to discuss is we found it. That it would be about 75% of what we project to take in or 45000 Okay. Um, all right, so any other action on the ATM warrant that we need to do or discuss? No? Okay. All right, sounds good. Thanks. Any questions here? I have questions, but all building related, so I'll wait till we get to that item. Sounds good. Thanks. Um, so the next item on here is, is new business C, which is the select board meeting schedule for, for reviewing the spring and summer meeting schedule. Uh, let's see. I'm just waiting for Heather to drop something. Well, Heather doesn't have any updates oh, yet, okay. so today was only day one. Okay. Heather will have more next time. I, okay. I don't know if we can continue this course. The next meeting, I won't be here because it'll be Paxton's first board meeting. So, um, But I'm trying to see if we can secure their meetings as well. So then, you know, I know what I can do and what I can't do. So. Okay, and for, for so just so everybody understands who may have not uh, known last time, so <laughs> that may not have made a lot of sense. So Heather's going to be the town administrator of Paxton, and there's some conflicting potential schedules with meetings, so that's what we're trying to work out. We already did that last time, but we do it again. Yes. So Pierre, I'm celebrating. Uh, yeah, I'm just <laughs> Uh, okay, well, it, uh, I guess, you know, uh, anything else on schedules you guys want to talk about, or no? All right, well, we'll just push that off to the next meeting that she won't be at. Okay. I'll send a memo. Okay. Um, so new business D is the transition from uh, Acting Town Administrator Nixon to Town Administrator McLean, and the discussion about process of transition and appointment of David Nixon as a special consultant. So um, we have a, a, a sort of a memo uh, you know, regarding this, but if you guys want to 
take us through what what you you you're planning, and, and we can you know discuss uh, how that sounds. So the contract the board in the town signed with David had me taking over town administrator as soon as I got back. So that happened on May second. So to keep David here and legal, we appointed him as uh, we've had two different names, but either special advisor or special consultant or very special consultant. If you want to be funny about it. <laughs> Uh, in order to continue to pay him. And the reason for this is um, because of the timing of my military service. We are right in the middle of budget season in a very important uh, town center project, finishing that up and the town meeting, which are kind of the Super Bowls of, of any town government. So having some continuity for the current projects and some uh, handover, if you will, is very important. So uh, I appointed David as the special whatever we want to call him in order to advise me and continue to work on some of these projects. So what that looked like is he's been in the office with me for the weeks of May 2nd and May 9th. This is within the budget, so there will be no additional budget request for this for the town administrator position. Um, he's going to come in on Monday as I'm taking a very short family vacation in the next couple days. And he'll be here, so there's always one of us in the office in order to to have that continuity, and then he will go into a as-needed status, um, available for calls, and you can say how much you're willing to let me call you. Um, he'll be paid for any work that's in, in excess of that and 100% focused on the Route 68 project, so we meet all the deadlines. It would take more time to get me up to speed on that than it would be worth, so having him focus on that is important because we're securing more than $5 million for the town. So um, I am in the town administrator role, focusing on the budget, town meeting, HR, and starting up some, or continuing some projects, and David will be working on um, the day-to-day -day and <coughs> the Route 68 projects. Well, I did. Uh, Ryan said it all. I'm happy to help the town of Hubbardston. Uh, it's been a great year. Uh, come to know Ryan through his work, his work ethics, his values. Uh, they're all excellent, top-notch. You're lucky to have them. Um, and uh, whatever I can do to support his work and the work of the board and the town of Hubbardston, I'm happy to do. And we do need to say thank you without a doubt for this. There's no obligation you have to do this. And, and you know, we've talked about it a few times, but being able to be available, especially on a long, your first, you know, a long um, sort of acting position over a year, that, that's, uh, I think, a little bit longer than normal for this sort of a thing because of our circumstances, which you um, knew what you were signing up for and stuck with it throughout. So to extend it even further, we really appreciate it. So that's the plan that um, David and I spoke about. I didn't give him as much of a choice as you've, as you've <laughs> done. But um, that front. do you have any comments, <laughs> concerns, anything you want to see, or um, any, any issues so we know we're on good footing with you in terms of the transition plan? I got nothing. You guys, you guys have laid it out for us here, and all the important things are being yeah. taken care of. So yeah. it's hard for us to. Our good hands. Up anything, yeah. I just, hands. I just personally like bullet point number three. It made me giggle when I read it earlier today. <laughs> the transfer of knowledge. Yes, transfer of knowledge. I just want to just point that out. That's plug what's it. going on. Plug plug it. It. Plug it. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> There'll also be a town meeting too, which will help um, with any questions that, again, I wasn't able to get up to speed on. That's a service for the residents to make sure they're properly informed about the voting. Okay. All right, thanks. Uh, we will move on to new business E, which is the RAP funding road maintenance update. Um, Want to let us know what the RAP um, acronym first means, and then mm -hmm. uh, let us know, um, you know, from there what, what you want to talk about. And we already have talked about this a little bit, but just you know, bring it up. So RAP is winter repair for roads. State had. Um, in excess or an unspent amount of ARPA funds. And a couple things were being bantered about in terms of assisting towns. One of them was increasing Chapter 90, which Chapter 90 is money that we use to repair roads. Uh, this RAP funding came as the same dollar amount, $100, $100 million in the state budget, which translates for Hubbardson to $280,000 of money. This is something that, that has been signed and, and is available. It follows very similar rules to Chapter 90. Uh, you do need pre-approval for any projects. So Travis and I are working to um, 
it has to be spent in the next year. So this will be added to the money we already have, the chapter 90 is 350,000 plus 280. So this allows us to make sure we complete all of the plans on Cruz and, and Thompson Road, and then uh, work on several maintenance projects that, that are a priority. And some of those include some maintenance work on Route 62, and um, Travis made a request for some uh, crack sealing as well that needs to be done. So these maintenance projects extend the life of our roads and allow us to use all the money we have for the repair of roads. If you just focus on repair, you'll fall behind because these new roads only last five to 10 years and it takes 20 to 30 years for us to cycle through all of our roads. So we'll have a presentation for you on the plan to spend this money and has to be spent to make sure that everybody's on the same page and then we will get to work doing that work. Um, Does it include any paving? Like straight paving of roads? People are just, that, that's the question people have is when's my road gonna get paved, so. Not new paving, no, unless directed. Yep. What about potholes? Yes, so um, ask to look at the procurement of materials to make sure that we're continuing to, to do that work. But um, <coughs> the definition of what falls under winter repairs is very broad, so we're making sure that we stay in, in that, but trying to supplement our already in place plans in order to maximize that money. Okay. In my opinion, I don't think this will be the last of the money we see for this type of thing, so we want to put together a plan that extends even beyond this money to make sure if new money comes in, it's, it's falling right into place into a plan and not turning into a a la carte menu, if you will. And we did, David, we had a couple little adjustments with the with the, um, the right-of-ways that was going to have to come out of Chapter 90, which will come out of Chapter 90, mm -hmm. but this will help, you know, uh, replenish um, the monies um, from the normal Chapter 90. Right. Right. So, okay. And if I, I can't help it, but the um, Chapter 90 hasn't increased in more than a, in a decade. We're getting the same amount, and everybody knows how inflation is impacting their own personal wallets. It's no different than how it's impacting our ability to pave roads. So we are using the same amount of money that we did before and getting about 40% of the buying power that we used to. Yep. So a lot of this money is allowing us to do what we thought we would, would do five years ago because of the way that the money has shrunk. So um, we really need a permanent fix for Chapter 90, but it's not necessarily coming. It is an election year, so. It doesn't help with liquid asphalt being up 25%, you know, which is, you know, uh, petroleum based, right? So that, that, that doesn't compensate for any of that. Yeah. So it just means you can pave less because, you know, the price for asphalt is more. We bid with a, I think, 10% escalator and we're worried. Yeah, huh. right. Which is a $60,000 swing in a bid. That's yeah. a lot when you have $350,000 to work with. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to put it into perspective, you're getting the same amount as you did, I think, back in 2011. And in 2011, you were getting a third of what you needed in order to keep your roads in trim. So when you when you keep it level and then the, the prices go for everything go up, um, you can see the damage that's doing to your roads. Yeah, that was quite the Debbie Downer uh, contribution right there. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's, it's the truth. I, I, I get it. I mean, that's what we have to hear, and that's what the people who make these decisions have to hear. So let me just let me just go over this real quick then. So Lombard Road is scheduled for this year with ARPA funds, correct? Correct. And in Chapter 90, we already had allocated for certain projects and certain streets. Cruz and Thompson. But now we don't think we're going to be able to accomplish those projects. Those are already bid and ready to go. Done deals. But okay. they're more expensive than they th we thought they would be. So this new money is helping to make sure that those projects are fully funded. So this wrap money is what we're using for that? Or can we not use it for that? So we had a little bit left over from last year. Okay. I don't think we'll need any more, but if we do, we're covered. And then the 280 will, and the 100 that's in the capital plan will cover uh, maintenance and other deferred things that we haven't been doing because we've been focusing on paving. In right. Including any delta that is um, on those two roads. Yes, and the town center project, if there is any, which yep. we don't think there is. Okay, very good. Okay. Any other questions, please? Mike Stahl, 5 Lombard Road. Hey Mike, thanks um, for coming. Travis indicated that 
he's getting a ditch dipper, an excavator that can clean out ditches. Is that fall under the wrap and winter maintenance to get our swales cleared out so that they flow and take the storm runoff? So the mini excavator is in the capital plan for this year. If town meeting approves it and our town officials approve it, then it'll be available after July 1 for that type of usage. That's why he's getting it, not just your road, but that function mm -hmm. across town. But that's going to be an excavator that has a, a ditch bucket on it yes. or capability. But can the funding, so this wrap, is this in-house contract or combination that the funds will be used for the quote unquote winter maintenance? I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, let, there's two hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Is it going to be the work going to be contracted out or done in house? What's that two hundred and eighty? Uh, what's the mechanism for obligating that money? Because you have one year to opt to either award the contracts or use that funding. Is what I thought I heard. So we're going to put together a plan to to put in front of the board to make sure that that, that they agree. But the mechanism is you work with the state to pre-approve a project. They say, yes, this is an acceptable use. You bid or contract, depending on the cost, mm -hmm. um, enter into a contract agreement, do the work, and then pay them. Okay, and sounds like it's it m the 280 is not gonna be used in-house. It'll be mostly contracted out. That's what I think I hear. Yes, for okay. the most part, yes. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? No? Okay, we'll move on to old business then. Uh, a is the Route 20. <laughs> Oh, not on what I was looking at. Thank you. So, Massachusetts uh, Re Regional Planning Commission, uh, MRPC, appointing a select board member for representation on the MRPC. We received an email about this recently. Um, you know, this is something uh, we customarily have to provide, and they, they do sort of annually. So, I guess the part of the discussion here is, is um, if anyone would like to be the, uh, the MRPC um, uh, representative. Anyone interested? Is this the one that meets at, on that Abbott, off of Abbott Road that we went to at one time? Yes, it's not the same committee, but that's where they meet. That's where they they're meet. They're connected. Yeah. Because I think I'm already on that one, but I don't know what this Perfect. is. Perfect. So. <coughs> well, you know how to get there then. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, no, I'm just uh, curious. and uh, So, no, I mean, I'll, I'll fill in. be happy to. I would like to nominate Jeff for that. <laughs> Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Yes. Aye. Nice. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. There we Thank go. You, Abstain. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, next item is old business. Uh, A, Route 68 project, uh, town center project. So this is the update and signature for non-participating agreement, Hubbardston um, AGR number 117874, uh, notice of taking. David, I presume this is something you can let us know what this is? Yeah, so this is a standard form from the Department of Transportation. Uh, they're going to be working on the road. We are not asking them to do anything such as put in water lines or sewer lines or any other infrastructure. So this is a letter stating that uh, we are not uh, asking them to uh, subcontract for uh, municipal work. Yeah, very standard stuff here. Do anyone have any questions about this? I just, the only question I have related to it, uh, David, so we had done ARPA, an ARPA award um, for the payout of the um, compensation for the easements? Yes. Has that been completed at this time? No, that's something that's going to happen this week. But, uh, I can't do it until the uh, order of taking is registered. Okay. And I'm waiting on two appraisals for that, which should be done by Wednesday. Are we anticipating having money turned back? Could possibly. Okay. But I'll let you know. Okay. Does that impact this at all? Uh, no, it does not. This is a related question. I tagged it in. Okay. So, yeah, no, I wasn't. so <laughs> things are tight. I may ask the board to come together for a special meeting in order to sign straight pieces of paper, but I think all the pieces are in place. Okay. Would that be this week? That would be meeting? next Monday. <coughs> okay. So I don't think I have to do that, but just in case there's some sort of glitch or hiccup or something like that, um, 
just be on, we'll have the 10 minute meeting and take care of it. Yeah, let us know. I mean, I'm sure yeah. we can get three of us together. That's what we need yeah. at a minimum. So, DOT, Mass DOT is happy. Our council has everything that she needs except for the two appraisals. I think all the boxes have been checked off. I think things are coming together. Okay. All right, so do we need some sort of motion for me to sign this? This is the non-participating agreement. Uh, um, what do we, uh, how do you want to move it? Authorize the select chair to uh, sign the uh, notice of non-participation in the project. Authorizing whom? Me. Okay. Make a motion to authorize the uh, chairman of the select board, Dan, to sign the uh, non-participating agreement for the town of Hubbardston. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, all right, so the next item is the ARPA recommendations. We have a discussion of recommendations to the select board of the Hubtown Diner and here for you. Heather, why don't, you, uh, why don't you let us know. I know you gave us a memo. Thank you very much for that. It was very clear and, and concise on, on what the important items are, such as how much money is left and how much has been spent. But could you please um, uh, enlighten everybody? Sure. So where we are in this process is we did um, our final meeting last time with our remaining applications. We've been through every single applicant who has um, submitted an application. We've discussed their um, documents with them. We've asked for additional documentation over time. Um, some folks we've asked to you know finish working on their project and come back and submit for the next round with what we have remaining because um, they didn't have all of the pieces together yet, total costs, what it was looking like, and so forth. Um, so at this time, we do have a current, going into tonight's meeting, our current balance before we um, review the proposals on the table is currently $442,296,000. Um, before the select board this evening, we have three asks, two for um, Hubtown Diner and one for Here For You. Uh, Hubtown Diner, we have one for lost revenue in the amount of $17,235.95 and one for Hubtown Diner improvements as stated in their application in the amount of $5,364.05 and then we have one for Here For You for lost revenue in the amount of $15,950. As explained in the memo, we used a similar process to what we did previously with the business as we said what was the application, are you asking for lost revenue or capital or both? Um, and then we were able to look through the profit and loss statements from the past couple of years using 2019 kind of as the baseline. And then looking at 20 and 21 and seeing what the difference was, um, whether it was a completely visible deficit or you had to look at what they normally earned and then what the difference. And that was the amount we did as a straight out grant just for lost revenue. And then the balance of that where an applicant had also asked for capital, we put towards the specific capital request that they were asking for. So that's the logic of the um, ARPA committee when we went through those discussions. Uh, we did have, I know here for you, um, has potential for having additional losses that they might have experienced or even capital that they need, but they weren't totally sure on the initial application. So we did encourage them to look into those details, you know, additional expenses they had incurred in order to be open because of Governor Baker's orders or anything else they had to do during the pandemic to try to um, do a better job of documenting that and bringing that back. In addition to the request, the um, ARPA committee is also looking at meeting again this week, actually on Wednesday at 5.30 before the all boards and committees meeting in order to further go through our application, try to make it a little easier now that we've learned a lot from the first round, um, as well as discuss whether or not we continue doing a matrix, um, whether it makes sense to do that form of scoring or something else, and what other things we can do to get the word out as well as help applicants come back. Um, if both of these applications are approved tonight, the request, the total balance we would have before anything gets returned, 
that wasn't spent, like <coughs> potentially from Lombard, potentially from the easements and so forth, would be 403746 The last request of the select board as a whole is if there's any direction we as a board want to send back to the opera committee as to what we wish for them to look at um, in the next round of applications. Whether there's, I know every time we bring this up, there's a lot of discussion about um, business focus. So whether that's something that's such a strong priority of the select board that we want to actually say to the opera committee as a whole, hey, we want you to focus on this first, or whether there's any other focus just to give us direction when we're sitting there, the five of us trying to figure out how to do the application and what to tell applicants the next round. So I guess my first ask, um, and I don't know, Dan, how you'd like to discuss these, but the Hubtown Diner is the first one, $17,235.95 in lost revenue and $5,364.05 5 for the improvements. Okay, well that one's on the table here. I guess we'll just sort of start here. Does anyone have any questions about the numbers or what's included or what's not included or anything like that at the table? Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't either. Okay. Do you want separate motions? One for Hubtown, one for... Yeah, might as well. All right, I'd like to make a motion that the select board approve an ARPA grant in the amount of $17,235.95 for lost revenue for Hubtown Diner and a second grant in the amount of $5,364.05 for Hubtown Diner improvements. I will second that motion. Shocker. <laughs> um, so discussion, yeah, just real quick, um, you know, I think we're nearly there. I, um, you know, I, I see you're here tonight, and thanks for your patience on this. There's obviously a process. Um, Ryan and I were talking about the other day, too. Eventually, somebody may audit us on all of this, right? So there's a process that we have to go through to make sure that we're doing everything correct. <laughs> You are not going to get forgot about. Um, <laughs> no. And and you know it's it's um, you know um, glad we finally got there. So um, any any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Yes. 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 Okay. Unanimous. Okay. <clears throat> the next piece on the table. You're welcome, Julie. <laughs> next piece on the table is here for you, um, and it was in the grant request of fifteen thousand nine fifty for lost revenue. I'll second that. Is that a motion? No. No, sorry. I thought it was that was just, a motion. just talking. <laughs> like first. Nobody's talking. I'm like, second. Uh, what was that number again? 15950 But did you say she's coming back for, for your meeting? She might be asking for additional funding in the second round. So it would be a separate, another one in terms of. Potentially. So we're not doing the five, the capital. You're still yeah, waiting we, on that. We can't right? give her more than what she asked yeah. for or something additional than what she yeah. asked for. So no. she. I think there was some confusion in the first round about what the application was, and people took a different approach to it based on how they interpreted it. Mm -hmm. um, for the next round, we've talked um, amongst the upper committee at the last meeting that it might be a good idea to do like an information session. Just people have questions, they can bring them to us. Plus, I think if we just restructure and simplify the application, now that we know which questions we ask every single applicant, <laughs> right? Just stick the question there, make it a lot easier. Um, it will be helpful. So she may come back with another request, but we don't know yet. Okay. Well, there would be a, uh, somebody have a motion then? I'd like to make a motion that we award ARPA funding in the form of a grant to Here For You in the amount of $15,950 for lost revenue. I'll second that. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Yes. yes. Aye. Okay. Unanimous. So before we move on to the next thing, we just got to come back if there's any recommendations from the select board, if the select board wants to take any official action or give direction to the ARPA committee relative to the second round. I guess I'll lead off with, first off, thanks, ARPA committee. You know, I know we've got two representatives here, but you guys, you know, it's clear how serious you took it, without a doubt, and absolutely from scratch. So I get it. I don't have anything else to add. I think you sort of, you're learning what you want to do better or not that you know what I mean um, for the sort of next round um, and you know I, I don't have anything further than that you guys well I would just continue what I really support and I would hope that if it, if our businesses are applying that they really get uh, serious consideration because I think they need a priority now and I thank you for because I've been on you for, for this too so, so I haven't changed my opinion on that so that would be how I would feel yeah, like you said, the application hindsight is 
very geared towards a municipality, not a business. So I can totally see why they had to keep coming back with stuff or some of the other applicants because it just, after filling it out, it doesn't make sense for a lot of people. And again, you you know, no one knows what they're doing. We're all making this up as we go. Um, but I definitely think, I, th I just think we need more of a, I don't know, I just... Consolidated? It, yeah, it's not only the forms, but also like a path on where we're going because it was, the first, there was a first block and then they were like kind of piecemealed. And I thought originally the ARPA committee was going to be more like the CIPC where they have a consensus and not pick and choose or anything like that because you can't pick and choose who's where, you know, who's coming, especially for businesses, who's coming for money and stuff like that. But kind of like a consensus on where the, like some uses long term, like X amount should be towards businesses or, you know, what I mean, like, like some guidelines to come back to us with. But it felt more like after the first, at first I thought that's what was kind of happening, but then it started coming in piecemealed and it was more like you guys were just making sure all the boxes were checked and then sending it to us. So then I kind of got confused on, well, what is the, I thought the ARPA was supposed to kind of dive into it a little bit and come to a point for what's best for everyone, the businesses, the town, the whoever's asking, you know, like as a goal, kind of like the CIPC. So, and maybe I was unrealistic <coughs> on my thought process on how I thought the ARPA was looking at this. You know, I, but that's where I thought the ARPA was kind of going. And it just felt like more like after a while, it was more, you guys were just trying to vet the information and send it back to the select board to make the decisions. So, I well, don't know. I, th I think that some of it was, um, I know in talking with David early on, we had a lot of things that had priority, right? Like Lombard Road, if we were going to approve it, they wanted to approve it right off the bat so we could get going on it. You know, the easements were 68, so I think some of that kind of pushed for a hand, regardless that we had to, you know, look at those. Plus it helped that, you know, just the way the matrix was, it ended up scoring those higher. It wasn't intentional that they were scored higher, it was just the way the questions were asked and a lot of the questions you know we got from Fitchburg because we hadn't done this before we didn't know where we were going how to do it early on in the ARPA process we actually had a lot of conversations and there was um, dissent on the board one way or the other about whether or not we should do you know a pot of money this way or a pot of money that way and we didn't want to spin how we decided on projects so we kind of just started at the highest ranked and worked our way down and then, you know, as we kept going, you know, some of the projects weren't ready yet. So that's when, you know, they kind of stepped to the site. If we had gone just that way, we never would have got to some of the businesses because they were lower ranked. Yeah, and that's because... And we would have ran out of money. Yeah. So we try to do it as fair as we can. And I think, you know, taking away some version of, you know, discussing how we're going to do the next round once we get them in, you know, are we going to do a forced rank system? Are we going to do scoring another way? However, we can do it because I think it really does matter the order you get to review the projects in as to you know which ones. You well, yeah, eventually be, the money will be gone. Yeah, yeah I would. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to be part of the decision making process at that time, but I would, you know, sort of upon reflection, and I think we've done the best we absolutely can this 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 first round. Um, but upon reflection, upon discussion with Ryan, you know, I think I you know I would recommend, you know taking some off the top, <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it, and putting it to the side um, for, you know, things that the town, um, you know, needs from whether it's roads or something else, like uh, whether it's 100,000, whether it's 200,000, whatever number, but um, it just feels like that, that um, I think we, we uh, did our best and, and addressed some important things right off the bat, and I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, not that your hand was forced, you know, the committee's hand was forced, but there were some things where we were like, hey, we got to get going on this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, but it, it does feel like we have some time to reflect on this now a little bit. And, um, um, you know, I, I think I'd make that recommendation to, to, to sort of earmark some, some, something for the town. I don't know if you want to contribute to this conversation here, Ryan. Yeah, this is the first time I've been able to talk publicly or to the board about it. The, 
the, the obvious appearance is that we would try to get as much for the municipal side as, as possible. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily true. W what I have heard in my four years here is we have some pretty big problems in town and we don't have the resources and we don't want to raise the taxes to solve the problems. So when you charge me to solve those problems or to present you options, right, think outside the box, bring these different things to you, seek grant, grant funding out. Uh, one of the things that, that I think when I see monies coming in like this is a once, a once in a whatever, 10, 20 year opportunity to fix some of the larger problems in town like a Lombard Road or a public safety building or town infrastructure with those funds. Now that, and I've been very clear in all my communications, that doesn't mean you should take all of it to do that, but you should set some of it aside as you put well um, in order to address those because you're, you're not going to get it again. And the only other way to do it is to, to raise taxes and that, that impacts everybody. So i um, very happy, and I'll just say it, I'm under no obligation to, but I've watched dozens of towns go through these fights and um, everybody's going to disagree. There's always some level of disagreement, but this process has been very transparent and focused on the ethics of the community and the, and the values of the community. So it was great to watch. Um, I do recommend that the board, with this funding and some of the next rounds of funding that are going to come with the ARPA, decide what's the next big thing you want to fix because there may be nothing after this except for asking the taxpayers to do it. So reserving some for businesses or recreation or, or other focuses and then another piece for what you want to solve in the town I think is a smart focus. Could you um, just state for the board the example you gave about, uh, you don't have to say which town because I can't remember either, city, whatever it was, who basically just said, yep, we got this six million or whatever it was, we're doing this and just did it? So some of the towns um, spent the money right away without without a process in order to solve a big problem. And it's going to solve a big problem and it'll have a generational change for the town, but it, it doesn't feel great when, you know, when the money just disappears. Other towns have been so slow or non-coordinated in their efforts that it's just been a, a grab bag, right? And it's, it's not coordinated at all and it's, there's nothing fair to it. It's just everybody's trying to get a piece because it's there. Uh, this, this process has been the opposite of that. It's been thoughtful, there's been some thought put into it. Uh, this remaining money, this round two money, is, is all we're going to get. So I would just suggest that, that if anyone has any thoughts about how to use it to its maximum potential, this is the time before it, before it goes, because we're going to spend it. We have this many needs and this much money. So, mm -hmm. To your point, and it's a, it's a question I was going to raise anyway, when he was describing it as a grab bag, um, do you have a filing deadline yet for the next round of applications? Is July that already 1st. set? We set it when we did the initial application. We mm -hmm. wanted to let people know if we had additional funds we were going to do a second round, and we had discussed it for July 1st. So that's what we initially told people is the next round will be due applications for July 1st. We expect that we should be able to have um, the next round, I, I expect we should have the next round of the revised application and the instructions out to people before the end of May so they have a month to work on it. Again, if I could strongly recommend that you make certain that that word gets out, that this is the deadline, um, to his point about just the grab bag too, because um, it, initially, and this is not a criticism because everybody was learning as we were going, but initially, we ended up with like two deadlines on the first round. No, only one. Because there was always a question. On, no, always people, one. People were coming in and filing right at the end, and then oh gee, I should have. I didn't know. I'm just simply saying. Yeah. I want. I think they make it clear t to the town. Well, Jeff, do you have any suggestions of where else to advertise it? Because last time we put it, I think we had it on the website. Did we do a code red call, David? Um, what else did we do for advertising? Facebook. Um. Yeah. yeah, we got it. We got it out there. So I mean, Tom wasn't criticizing. I'm simply saying, yeah. I think that's important so that someone, it's not to avoid what Ryan was saying, like this grab bag type thing. Of, okay, well now someone else is coming in. We should open it up again to this or that. I think we just need to stick to whatever you have and which is what you did the there. first time, right? Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. not thinking we had a grab bag yeah. situation. No, I wasn't saying that. that. I was just commenting to that because. I, I just think uh, 
I agree with what Ryan is saying too that in terms of it's a one shot deal for everybody, including the town. So that if well, one thing I'd just like to reiterate, um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I said this at the last meeting of all the applicants and all the projects that we're trying to put forward, um, charitable and private sectors have only accounted for like 12 percent of the 1.4 million. You know, I don't think that's egregious at all. I think we're fortunate to only have 12 percent of the money be requested for those two things, and we're even more fortunate to have 88 percent for public use, just naturally. I do have a question, though. David, your your report here said um, we got like 360. Right, that's, that, assumes, that assumes that um, we fund Habitat for Humanity. Uh, if uh, the CPA article on the town meeting warrant goes through, they said that they would withdraw their, their ARPA recommendation. How much was that for? 25000 And uh, the uh, senior center gave a range of between twenty-five to 35000 But we didn't so fund that. You haven't funded that, but I left I left that number okay. at the higher end of the range. Six hundred and fifty-five or so delta, right? I don't know. Does it account for the forty-three thousand dollar delta? I think so. Should twenty-five plus? I'm not exactly, but twenty-five for the habitat and the senior center deck, which doesn't. Shouldn't really be in there, but it's not like it was, so. Okay. Okay. Yep, I'm okay. Okay. Um, for, the, for the fourth round, just, just something to consider is lessons learned from other towns is the ability to fund future projects based on these decisions is extremely important. So you get like a request for the ambulance from, from me and the fire department, right? That, re that request went in. What that really represents is the town funding something with one-time revenues that it will no longer have to borrow for or use over multiple years. So that frees up money for other projects. And towns that have been successful with their ARPA have really leveraged these decisions so that this decision gets to this decision gets to that decision. So it's not just what we're gonna do next, like what particular item or project, it's how that snowballs into uh, decisions down the road that'll, that'll free up capacity. And um, making sure that's part of the process, I think, is important for this board for all the reasons that we always talk about. Uh, we're, we're trying to solve problems, and that's the only way to do it. Okay. Any further on ARPA from anybody else? The only thing I would ask is um, when we're getting ready for the next round, Brian, if you could look at the possibility of putting in an application for um, the Cleaning up the site, um, whatever we have to do for remediation. Lot 57. Is that what it is? The pit? The pit? Yeah. Yep. The pit. The pit. Mm -hmm. Lot 57. Yeah. Because I think it's good to put in for, you know, funds that are something that we may not be able to get town approval for at a later date. Yeah, but what we have to do and yeah. that, that makes we didn't anticipate answer. in the first place. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. If you need a hand with estimates on that, I can help out with that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, let's move on then uh, to uh, Old Business C, which is the building department. Um, this is an update on, on what's been done in regards to the building department situation we're in. Um, you guys want to let us know? Yes. Uh, that you've solved the problem. So, so <laughs> solved the problem. So, some things to consider as we finalize this decision. David put 60000 in for the hiring of a full-time building inspector. One thing we're going to have to decide is um, how many hours to, to budget for fitting into our pay plan and a couple considerations there that are important. If we don't do enough hours, we won't attract the right type of person, but if we do too many hours, I don't think we have the work um, in, in town to fully fill that. So it's a sweet spot. How many hours can we get? How many hours of work do we have? Depends on what you want to get done, and I'm not being coy. Um, how much time do you want to put into zoning enforcement, zoning determinations? The building inspection side is probably 
10 to 15 hours a week. So everything else in addition to that would be focused on you know, some community or, or cultural changes uh, in, in how we do business. Yeah, so Larry did it part-time, half hours, right? 18 or 20 hours for a decade plus, right? Yes. And so just using those numbers that you just said, 12 to 15 of those hours were done doing that normal business with a little bit more on some sort of minor enforcement uh, action, which we didn't ever really do too much of, right? Yeah, if you really wanted to focus on it, you, you could add some hours there, but at 12 to 15 hours, you're not gonna attract a, you know, a person looking for full-time work. You're gonna attract someone who's part-time. Uh, what I found in part-time inspectors in this area is they're very willing to do building inspection, but not as willing to do, to do zoning work it's much more arduous so you'd want a full-time person to come in because they would be committed to the position and, and that difficult work uh, part-timers tend to just want to chip away at the, the easier stuff and not really dip into the some of the more controversial stuff so knowing that that's what we have budgeted and decisions that need to be made there if we did bring in someone for more full-time hours that's going to relieve pressure on uh, Mallory as a land use assistant she was doing a lot of work trying to make the agreement with Gardner work, so that, that would allow for her skills to be used, which is why I suggested that uh, we focus on meeting minutes and some of those smaller items so she can work on, on larger projects. Uh, rather than bring in an assistant and then use Tony to supplement, say, with the planning board or, or other um, functions to make sure that all of our boards and committees feel properly supported and are engaged. And then uh, in the current budget situation, there would have to be some revenue sharing with inspectors, part-time inspectors for wire, plumbing, and gas. All of those were covered in our agreement with Gardner, so that's gonna reduce our revenues and, and change the function back to a, a revolving fund. Uh, so that's currently what's in the budget and what we'd be exploring, just looking for, and it doesn't have to be this second, some input from the board on, on what they want for that employee so that we, we make sure that they're set up for success. So if this went through town meeting at what we just discussed there at 60,000, the next action would be to put, a, um, to put an application out there or put a job listing out there with that sort of anticipated number in mind for applicants? Yes. In a That's assuming full-time you're talking about, right? 30 plus hours. Part -time, 30 yeah. plus hours. Yeah. You're right. going to get some candidates for that. That's an yeah. attractive job in this region. But that's what we currently have in the budget. Yes that's going to town meeting for review. So the, the next action after that, if it were approved, if, it, if that's how it made it through, would would be to you know, try to hire somebody. Correct. So perfect world. Um, I also have some concerns about <coughs> last year with the budget, the school assessment, our current number. You know, that's gonna be a place that's gonna have a lot of <coughs> stress for cuts yeah. as well. So who's, so that's just the building department. So who's doing the electrical, plumbing, and that stuff. So we have to hire those positions as well. On top of that, so that's extra on top of the 60 grand. So those will be revolving the funds? Yeah. So they will be paid per action. But how do we? It's, we will get people for that, that's. Just to pick up piecework? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. It's not, we do them, but they're not that okay. burdensome. So people who do them in the area tend to share them. Okay. We already have people so we're not worried about that. We're just worried about the building inspector itself. Worried about it all, but well, less so, know. yes. So <laughs> whatever happened with OCAM? Anything? So, um, Sorry, did I make you hop? One thing with that <laughs> is it would open up the opportunity to fill those hours with the regionalization. Uh, many towns in the area are already in a regionalization, so we are discussing with towns what they may may want to do and reaching out to towns that are looking to shore up this position. Everybody's having inspection problems, especially in this area. So um, ideally, we would fund this position full-time, regionalize it, and then take advantage of our full-time staff for both planning and building to, to host an agreement and build what we had in Gardner, but run it ourselves. If I might ask, David, did we ever get a response from OCAM? Not from OCAM, but New Braintree, we did. Uh, New Braintree, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excuse me, yeah. They're very interested. They still are. Um, okay. And discussing uh, it right now, so we don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, I gave them a job description. They've been reviewing it for a couple of weeks now. So a little bit like a leap of his name, right? Yeah. So a little bit of leap of faith, right? I mean, we, we, if we want to go in this route, we just sort of say, okay, we're going to put the money out there, and then hope we find some partners. Yes. Because every other thing we've tried hasn't worked. That's for sure. So you know. Um, so what is the ask? I don't understand the ask here. If it's already on the warrant and it's already budgeted for sixty thousand dollars for a thirty hour, what are we what are we discussing? What are we just making sure that the board understands what we're hiring? <coughs> so if we put money towards this, we're not putting it towards something else, and there there will inevitably be comments about about this employee's performance, and making sure that they understand what their job is going to be is going to be very important because it will be. Um, busy seasons and not busy seasons, and then what do they focus on when they're not doing inspection? If we regionalize it and we create a ton of work and they're running around like crazy, it's easy, but that's not a given. So we don't have enough work for a full-time position, but if we build a district, then we could get there. Yeah, we're proposing this for the first time ever in however many hundred years Hubberson's been in place to have a full-time building inspector, so that's why I think we're talking about it, to make sure that we're on board mm -hmm. with authorizing that to be part of the budget and going in that direction. So one of the reasons I think it's so important to invest in this position at this time, we have, you know, planning board who's taking some, you know, a lot of work towards working on the zoning bylaws and getting things up to date and so forth. And, you know, I remember a comment from a resident a couple town annual town meetings ago and they're like, we're adding new zoning bylaws, but no one's enforcing the current zoning pieces. You know, if we're going to invest the time in it, then we need to invest the money in someone going out to enforce. And understandably, enforcing a municipal bylaw or a zoning bylaw is definitely probably someone's uh, least favorite part of the job, uh, right? It's, you know, you have more confrontation. You might have to figure out, do you have to go to court? You know, where do you take things? You know, what's happening? But my vision, and it's just my vision, that you know it's been so long since we've had someone out there actively engaging and doing the zoning enforcement that it really you know we have to think about do we use this as an opportunity for education for folks you know some people may not know that we have certain bylaws in town that you know they're starting something they may not know they need a permit for certain things and some do know and they know better but no one's out there checking so if no one's checking and no one's coming to my house to tell me hey, I'm going to be having to pay triple triple the permit fee because I forgot to, forgot to get the permit before I started the work, then, you know, it starts getting people a little bit more on top of things, and then we don't end up with properties years later that nothing conforms. So it's just, to me, it's very important that we invest, you know, and give this a go, and who knows? Maybe it'll be the best thing that ever happened to us. Maybe, you know, we think about it in a year and we go a different You're direction. Right. It's not a forever decision. It's true. I mean, you'd want to so. go into it not hoping or thinking it's going to fail, but th that is reality anyway. Was it pitched to New Braintree that we would be home base for this person? Like Gardner had that we were the satellite and they were home base, or probably was assume. it shared? They have like 900 people in town, so I think I'm, ju I'm just asking. <laughs> It, we have to have further conversations. Okay, yeah, so we haven't got that far right yet. But they don't have the people. I'm well aware of that. Right. So it's not like they're at. We're adding a. Yeah. Right. But I just like. I think they'd be really time, happy. To yeah, if we were home base. Yeah. We covered. Gardner covered Hutchinson <coughs> with eight hours a week. Yeah. And all the complaints that you faced, or ninety percent of the complaints you faced, were zoning determination and zoning issues. In terms of inspections themselves, there wasn't a lot. So All right. Well, we can expect oh, more of that if we're full time. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a. It's a. So how long would we we yeah. be locked into something like this? It's up to you. I don't want to be locked into it long. <laughs> but I, don't, I don't think it's so necessary. I think it's overkill. So, so I don't think we need it. I think. I'm talking about it, man. I think. I'm just you know, want to make sure. I understand. I understand. And you're and hiring a, an employee. Right. So if we tell them. You have a full-time job, and maybe we attract someone that has one, and then we decide next year not to do it. That's not how we like to do it. I mean, this person is going to be proactive. He's going to he's going to make money for the town to support his salary, right? I mean, 
that's what that's ideally what we want them to do. We want them to pay him or her to pay for themselves, right? So not only do they got to do the 15, 12 to 15 hours of work you were talking about, they've got to proactively go out and, to your point, harass the public for, you know, violations and collect on those violations. Why do they have to pay for them? I mean, who else pays for themselves? Why does the building inspector have to pay for himself or herself? Well, isn't that the idea? Isn't that the justification for it? Uh, that he'll be I, able to do more of the stuff that's not being done today? Uh, I'd be careful about wording it that it's going to, this person's going to go out and harass the public and write violations because then it's never going to fly with the public. I just, I don't want to, I wouldn't word it that way. Maybe, like Heather said, some re education first to get people to understand how and why things are going wrong, but I don't think it would pay, I don't think it would ever pay for themselves by fining people. It, we don't have high enough fines, first of all. I think you're going to potentially see, you know, a little bit more revenues than you normally would because it will encourage more people to apply for a permit if they know someone's out there checking. And ultimately, if they are checking, you know, if they go to Dan's house and say, hey, Dan, nice garage. Um, did you want to go file a permit today or pay three times? Dan's going to go down and file a permit. So you're not going to be hitting people so much on the fine end. You're just... We need an opportunity to educate people and get people to, you know, if that's what we want. If we want to say, you know, we're a town that cares about our zoning, we're a town that wants to move things a certain direction, and we're going to invest all this time in, you know, um, the planning board doing the zoning and more time in master plan and looking at economic development and so forth, then we need to take a stance. And we also need to have a person who's available for meetings. To be able to go to the ZBA meetings, to be able to go to the planning board meetings, to be able to help and contribute and give them guidance on what the laws are and so forth. And this person's going to do that? That person, that's, that would be, be part, part of, of their role. job description? Those hours to go to all those meetings Heather's speaking about? Yeah. So, and that was another thing we had with Gardner where, again, it goes to the zoning enforcement end, Ryan, and not the building inspection end. but. They had a lot of trouble getting the person in that position to come to the meetings and they need them. Mm -hmm. I think it's overkill. I still mm -hmm. don't agree with it. Just, I'm just one vote on the board. Just to throw a couple more thoughts out there on the table. If construction is taking place without a permit, that means that, that construction is not going to your new growth figure. So you're, there's a secondary uh, revenue stream that's not being fed by people not obeying the, the laws of the building code. Uh, and the other is that the, your, your land use department is part of your public safety uh, uh, division of the government. When you have a tornado or an accident or a, or a structural fire or something like that, your building inspector is going to be one of the people who are going to be on scene in order to make sure that life safety issues are addressed as best as possible. So, you know, you're, you're getting you're getting a public safety function and you're getting new growth out of that uh, position as well. Okay. Okay. Any, anybody, anything else? No. <coughs> Ryan, do you need a vote or anything specific from us to help you moving forward? Nope, just want to make sure we know what we're, what we're building, and then we'll build it. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to suggest that we keep it a very limited position, one year, as in a trial type thing, to see if it's going to pan out how we think it's going to pan out. Well, I think... I think that will limit your applicants, so I think... That's fine. Well, we mm -hmm. can't really. We that's fine, and uh, it's. But we need to make sure the town <coughs> is okay with the concept first, I guess. So that would have to go past the town meeting. Uh, that no one put a hold on it and had any questions, or it got changed on the floor, or, or whatever. Um, and then at that point, then that discussion, I think, can happen. I think now it's you know clearly we know your position, but so we don't have to. We don't have to put to town meeting a limitation on the time frame of this position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You didn't appoint someone with a one-year appointment. Yep. Okay. Well, that would be my recommendation. Okay. 
All right, uh, the last item of all business we have here is the Memorial Day Parade uh, and update discussion. We've talked about this a little bit, but what do we want to, um, do we want to add to what Katie talked about before? What do we cover? I'll just add briefly that the um, Vietnam Veteran Memorial Committee has done just a fantastic job at this memorial. It's, it's going to be really great. They put together, I think, a ceremony that people will want to go to to honor Vietnam veterans. There'll be, what they said, about 40 Vietnam veterans there, so over 200 names from people from um, Hubberson who served. And Bill Shea has the exact statistic, but the percentage of people in Hubberson that were eligible to serve and who did was, was incredibly high, just as it was in every war prior to that. Then to restore a lot of the monuments on the common, uh, it's just going to be just one of those iconic days. We're hoping to get one of those pictures of all the Vietnam veterans in front of the memorial that 50 to 100 years from now, people will say, oh, that's when they put that there. So. I think if you can, you should take your families down and, and participate. I don't think you'll regret it. And um, it's always nice on Memorial Day, so we're gonna have good weather. <laughs> okay. Did you put in for that? No, Mother Nature herself. It's always nice. On okay. Memorial Day. All right. I'm just saying. Okay. All right. Uh, so next item is um, is is listed on our agenda as uh, Roman numeral seven, the town administrator report. But in our uh, our report that we have in our packets. It's called the Special Consultants Report. Uh, so I think that's you, David. Uh, as usual, we cover a lot of the items that you put on there, but uh, can you can you let us know what uh, what else you should uh, update us on? All right, so yes, we have covered can a I, lot Can of I just interject? Sure. I want, I'd like to, you know, use additional funds. You got about four bullet points for additional funds. Can you just make sure you go over those so that we know what the potential is for that? Okay, so the, there's a there's a lot of money coming towards the town mm -hmm. of uh, Hubbardston, and and some of it we can count on, some <coughs> of it we can't. Uh, we can hopeful. We can be hopeful. Uh, the first is the, uh, the legislation that's been signed by the governor back in December. I want to say um, the uh, Commonwealth Ar ARPA and surplus local share. So the uh, the legislature has uh, shared $2.5 billion of state ARPA funds plus $1.2 billion of surplus uh, tax money, uh, and that is coming to the town of Hubbardston as soon as the Commonwealth gives us information about how that is going to get to us. We're waiting for that information from the, the, the legislature. I think that's going to be revealed during the budget process. Right now the House has uh, passed their budget. It's going to go to the Senate, and I think in that in that uh, process that's when we're going to learn more about that money that's going to be available. The What's your confidence level on that one? High. Excellent. And I'll get into that in a little bit. That's the 250000 in here? No, the, no, we don't know how much that's oh, going okay. to be. The, there's the wrap money, the winter uh, recovery bill. Uh, Ryan talked about that. We're going to get $280,000 for that. Uh, that's going to go into roads. We already spent it. Yep, got it. All right. The governor filed, on top of the other ARPA money from the state, the governor filed a $3.5 billion economic development bill that proposes to fund projects with uh, for infrastructure and to create jobs. Uh, it includes $2.3 billion from this, the state's share of ARPA money. So the first bill didn't use up all of the ARPA money from the state. This one cleans the bank out. Mm -hmm. um, and $1.26 billion in capital bond authorization. Um, we would receive $250,000 under this uh, proposal. We would have to spend it by the end of the year 2026. Um, this, is a, takes a, this is a little unusual that this was filed not as an appropriation bill but as a bond bill. And the governor filed it very quickly because apparently at the congressional level there's an effort to claw back on committed ARPA money, and the state has a lot of ARPA money, so mm -hmm. they're trying to get it out to the towns as quickly as possible. So it's going to be a big push 
for anybody who has uncommitted ARPA money to get it out and get it spent. Um, okay. And there may be an effort as soon as this January coming up to, to make that clawback happen. So there's a lot of people moving on this one. Do, um, <coughs> is there discussion in, in, in what you guys have seen? Is, it, is there ever the discussion of, of any of this extra magic money going to schools so that the hundreds of towns that are in the conditions we're in don't have to worry about that? You know, or is that just never come up? And it's all just like, okay, each municipality is going to get a certain amount. Do your best to pay all your bills, which is fine. I mean, it is. But has it ever come up? In so yeah, so I've had private schools. Uh, I know that some private schools have applied for ARPA funds in other communities. I mean, like the regional. So yes, but the problem is these are one-time revenues. Yep. So if we were to use, that's why you're not getting any recommendations from David or I or ARPA really to fund, say, another police officer or more money for the schools yep. because next year it's not there. So you could you could have one good year, but then it would be just back to normal the next year. So everybody's targeting capital with these funds because it's, it's clearing the deck for, for these one-time costs. Okay. Schools are just ongoing. So yeah. if it's not capital there, then it's not as useful as, as you would think. Okay. But, you know, in very high level, you know, like when I watch the news, you, you hear them comment about this $6 billion surplus that the state of Massachusetts has, and it's... You know, it's going to be, and, and the talking heads will say it's going to be help. It's going to be helping education, and it's going to be helping public safety, yada yada yada. But again, that's very high level and very vague. I mean, is there any facts or, or something specific from the state that says some of this surplus and not not ARPA included in this, just just the natural state surplus, which is where we're getting some of this money from? I mean, that's that's proactively going to public education. So we would have preferred more more local aid I mean, yeah. to help us with our budget problems. But it just doesn't look like any of these bills are going to go that way. It's going to go towards um, economic development, infrastructure, things that people support. But so is that the only avenue to get funds to public education through local aid and then local aid turns around and supports their school district with it, or is there something that comes directly from state government to public education to help defray the cost that towns like us are facing to, to fund our annual budget? This is getting into speculation, but I, I don't think so. Like my speculation is um, Hubbardston is the type of community that's, that's not going to see a lot of additional state money for education because our, our demographics don't support right. current initiatives at the state house. However, proactive towns, and it's, it's not an exciting way to, to do it, but you, you can use this money to defer future costs, which allows you to put operating towards things like education or other things if you're smart about it. If you buy the, it's just like your household budget, if you, if you buy the shiny toy that you want to get right now and you don't think about how it's going to impact you five years, then that money goes to something and it disappears. If you invest it correctly, you can free up operating space in the future to increase educational spending, but that takes a lot of community standing up and saying, this is what we want to do five to 10 years from now. And it's hard to do, you know, we've been trying to do that for a while and I think we've made some progress, but. The short answer too, is that they're not going to fix the reimbursement problem that is broken with any of this money. So when we have the superintendent or, or uh, business manager from Quabbin talking to us about how they don't get X of percent of what they used to get however many years ago and that it right. hasn't come back, none of that is being fixed. And so that's where the main problem is. Correct. The state's going to say if you want more education spending, then fund it at the local level. Right. And we could for one year. That's what, you know, <coughs> which we wouldn't. I, that, but that's what it comes down to is that this is, this is just a different discussion. Okay. So the uh, bond bill for Chapter 90 is in the House, has been approved. Our share is going to be about, uh, out of $200 million uh, approved, uh, our share is going to be about $350,000. As usual. As usual. The opioid uh, settlement distribution, um, Attorney General announced a $26 billion national settlement with several 
pharmaceutical companies and uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts will receive $525 million. Hubbard's didn't share amounts to $16,000 and change, but we have to, uh, we will receive that over a 17 year period. So we get about $960 a year uh, for 17 years. Uh, the Infrastructure, US uh, Infrastructure Act, uh, $1.2 trillion. Uh, Massachusetts gets $9.3 billion over a five year period for transportation, sewer, water, broadband. Um, we are waiting for Massachusetts to work out the details. They want to use this as a way to leverage other funds. And um, they are, uh, the legislation to follow is an act relative to Massachusetts transportation resources and climate or mass track. Half of this money in the construction industry is is pretty well now going to the Cape Cod bridges. Yeah, yeah, right. to Sagamore and the Vorn Bridge. Right, so reconstructing those, that's, you know, four or five billion of the Yeah, so nine. we're waiting for more information on that. So those are the big chunks of money that are moving across the Good. Thank Commonwealth you. at this point. So in terms of Hubbardston, our revenues for this year for the, through April, uh, we're in really good shape. Uh, we should be bringing in 83% of our revenues at this point. We're at 97.8%. We're almost there and we have two more months of money to collect. So we're in really good shape for your revenues. Uh, I would be remiss if I, uh, you know, didn't say, it, you know, I guess I'll lead off with, because you, you were speaking, you, you sort of kept us on that track since you started, but I would also say, Ryan put us on that track a few years ago with the way that he um, uh, tempers expectations, sort of on purpose, and when it comes out like this, I think some recognition is necessary. So, I, I, you know, it puts us in a good spot to finish off the year, because finishing off the year in the opposite position is kind of impossible around here. So anyway, um, th that was it. Just uh, you know, sort of well done on that side, guys. Thank you. And your expenditures are trending below our expectations. We should be at 83.3 percent of our expenditures, and we are at 74.2 percent. So we're bringing in more money than we thought, and we're spending less than we thought at this point. So we're in really good shape. Okay, uh, thanks for the update. Uh, Can I ask any a question? Yeah, of course. I was. Uh, go ahead. David, um, make Hubbardson beautiful, or David and Ryan, were we able to find a thousand dollars for them for that? Yeah. Okay. So is that in a revised budget for town meeting? Yeah. Do you want it to be its own line item? I just consider it to be under select board expenses. Do whatever you want. Hey, are you? adding a thousand dollars to the select board expenses or are you taking it out of whatever's there? I was going to absorb it, but I can add it. Okay. It's up to you. I, I have no opinion on the matter. Absorb it's fine. It's with me. Anyone? What do oh, we yeah. generally <laughs> use select board expenses for? Legal. Oh, legal. just legal? Legal and advertisements and then anything that select board wants to invest in when those bills don't come over. And you feel like we're sufficient with what we have and we can absorb that thousand, no problem? Yes. Okay. I never think that, but yes. <laughs> I was going to say, I was the love that you asked it that way, Sam. <coughs> it's saying yes to that. Um, okay, Any, anything else on uh, the uh, special consultants report? Um, or, Ryan, do you have anything that, that uh, in your short time back that you want to bring up now? No. Okay. Just that the staff is, is journey. It's a good staff. All right, uh, next item is policies to review. Um, I, I, you know, we don't have any, hadn't had any in a while. I think uh, we took care of most of those. I, I guess we'll ask because we haven't mentioned it in months and months, but are there any more that you're planning? Or did we sort of do them all? For now, we're good. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, next item is, is matters not reasonably anticipated by the chair. This isn't one of them, but I just do want to go over the calendar real quick because it was at the end of your report. Um, 
and I'm just going to sort of read some dates here um, because I think it's important for people to know. And this calendar is, is real, you know, related to the budget and the warrant at town meeting. So, so um, yeah, there it is right there. So May 10th is the last day for ballot questions to be filed with the town clerk for annual elections. So that's tomorrow. <laughs> Um, May 11th, this is another item I was going to bring up. Um, so we have an all boards, committees, and department head meeting on, on Wednesday here, or over there, I guess. At, it's, it's at the Senior Center at 630. Um, there are maybe, what, a, a dozen or so uh, boards slash committees that are planning on attending yes. last we spoke? there's a lot of boards that have uh, uh, posted so that there are okay. no quorum issues. Okay. Uh, I don't know if anyone from the select board is going to be going. I'll be there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you guys I are was going. planning on it. Okay, sounds good. All right. Well, anyway, but the, just in case anyone's watching, the the intention I'll I'll be chairing the the, the, the discussion, um, and basically to start it off anyway, everybody's going to be giving uh, given about three minutes to sort of talk about um, what they want to talk about, uh, outstanding items, um, major concerns, that sort of thing. We're just going to kind of go around and sort of see how it evolves from there. So it hasn't been done in a long time around here. Um, expectations are are to just uh, sort of see how it goes. That's it. Um, and oh, David, do we have an agenda for that yet? Yes, uh, I, I thought, thought it was sent out. Okay, I don't think I, I saw that. I haven't seen that. No. All right, we'll make sure that it gets out. Okay. All right, thank you. You're posted already. Yep. So. Saw that. Bunch of bunch of different uh, um, committees are. Um, May 23rd is the public hearing on the budget. Select board votes on and signs the budget and warrant. So some of the discussion we've had tonight can, can get rekindled then. May 24th is uh, the warrant is sent to the printer um, and the warrant posting deadline and a notice of annual town meeting mailed. June 7th uh, is the annual town meeting. Are we having a, um, uh, uh, anything before the annual town meeting? Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Like a 6:30 meeting to get get rid of or, or get through some some minutia. It will be as needed. All right. Um, okay. So and then June 14 is the annual town election. So okay. Anyone have any uh, anything else that was not anticipated they want to bring up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to bring up um, the gymnasium floor permanent repair. Have we got a date for that set up? I don't know. Any it's supposed idea? to happen in June. Supposed to happen when school's done for the year and they can yeah. get in there and do their thing. Yep. yep. But I, I haven't heard of it in a while. We'll have to ask. Yeah, let's follow up with that. All right, sounds good. I think they do have a, a date locked in, but I can't remember what it is. June right. 17th or something you like that. You want to ask Bob then? Bob Stevens? Yeah, now that I think about it, June 17th is a Friday. So they'll probably do it on, let's call it June 20th. As much as you racking your brain about the calendar, you know, <laughs> might give you confidence. Would you mind asking Bob? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So there's I only mean, one day allotted for this repair. That's a start. Oh, okay. All right, good. Uh, I think it has what is a week to cure it or okay. something yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll find that out. Um, anything else from the board here on this? What do you got? Mike Stahl, Five Lombard Road. Last year, before the annual town meeting or before the elections. There was a meet the candidates night. I was wondering, I haven't seen or heard anything about that for this year. Just wondering if that's going to be done again. Good question. I haven't seen anything about it either. I know we don't actually have any contested positions this year. Mm. Not that that should necessarily determine whether we do it or not. Usually that happens that's often. the seniors that have. That, uh, that happens okay. often, but. but um, that Claudia would. Has you know. that come up? Has Claudia mentioned no, it? No, this first time. And, and we should uh, get in touch with Claudia and find out what... Yeah, I, I what bet she's going to want to do it. Thanks for bringing that it up. It was yeah. very beneficial last yeah. year. Yeah. No, I, I think it's a, a good idea. Um, okay, we'll find out. Thanks. Um, okay, um, any other items? Okay. Um, sort of seeing none. Um, is there any additional public or press questions? Nope. Move to adjourn. Second. Uh, it's not debatable. <laughs> it is 810. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Yes. Aye. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Aye.